So, welcome to the Ryro Show. We have Omar here. Hi. Omar, say hi. <laughs> hi, Lauren. Um, so just tell us a little bit about yourself, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dive right into it, but I want to give you your floor before I get into it. Um, so, yeah, I'm a double major in biochemistry and political science. I'm a junior right now, so I have two more years left at this campus, um, and I'm from Wolfish Bay, Namibia, which is a little port city, um, smaller than Oswego, but with more people, um, right on the coast. So, just your average of African. You the, oh, of Africa. Yeah. You said around the coast of what? <laughs> in Namibia. So, I'm just your average African making it big mm-hmm. on a city campus. Or trying to. I'm trying to. <laughs> um, cool. So... Before I start, I want to say that I have, there are a lot of people on this campus that I don't like, and like for good reason, right? Um, And you were one of them, like around last year, I want to say the beginning, around this time last year, a year ago this time, and we've spoken about it. How time flies. Right. (laughs) How things change. Yeah. Um, We've spoken about it, and we've talked about like why that was and all this stuff, but you know, I think you always, you always go away from... The fact that you didn't like me either. And you never you never told me why. So I'm going to tell everyone why I didn't like you. Okay. <laughs> um, and so around this time last year, I was under the impression that you were someone you weren't. And you, um, you know, you did things that you didn't do and all that other stuff. So I let someone manipulate me into thinking that you were someone you weren't. Which is, you know... Fine. Now I know. I know the truth. <laughs> yeah. But um. So therefore, I didn't like. I didn't really interact with you very much. Anytime I saw you, I was like, ah, fuck him, or whatever <laughs> the case may be. So, but then, I got to be director of SAPB, and we worked really closely together. And then the first weekend was it? Yeah, the first weekend. The first weekend, we went out. We went. It was me, you, Emily, Josephine, and someone else. That was it. No, there was someone else. It was just us four. Was it? Oh, wait, no. No, it was another, another. No, it was just us four. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, so it was us four. And then we went out and I was like, wow. What can I say? Yeah, I was like, wow, <laughs> honestly. And then from there, I mean, you are super understanding. You, like, I feel like I have a little therapist in the point now Aww. being there. It was really, yeah, you're not the person that people told me you were. So, now it's your turn. Okay, well, firstly, (laughs) I did not not like you. (laughs) Uh, But I could sense that we weren't on the same page, (laughs) right? And my first sense of this was, do you remember Constitution Day? Yes! Were you there? (laughs) It was you, you, me, Destiny, and Genesis. Uh In an empty room with like 500 seats, and there was pizza. And there was like five of us. Yeah. And obviously, they ask, if no one shows up, who shows up? The student leaders, uh-huh. right? So they asked us to come, um, and I came, because I'm all about politics. And there was a question that was asked, and I cannot remember what that question was, but somehow, like, we, we, you were just throwing at me, and I was, like, coming back, <laughs> I'm like, what's going on? So, um, yeah, I, I, that was when I sensed, but it was, I was just, it, it was okay, you know. I want to talk fine. about that day, because I remember that day. We're just normal people, <laughs> that are friends with each other, and enjoy each other's company. So anyways, um, so yes, Ryan, I, I appreciated you. Um, I did not not like you. I knew you went on the same page, but people grow. You live and you learn. Wait, I have more questions about you not liking me. So, um, there was... It was Constitution Day, and then you started coming to Women's Center. Yes. Like, the e-board meetings. Yes. And, of course, like, if I had anything really against you, you wouldn't have been invited or, like, let through that door. I just want to <laughs> I just want to make that known. Like, you wouldn't... Yeah, don't let the director of diversity and inclusion through the door. No, that's pretty much what was going to happen. I'd be like, nah, you know, this meeting is too busy. We can't have you. Yeah. So... I know I came. I came in. I was like, "What's up?" The party um, guys. Yeah. So when you came in, I wanted my girls to talk, which we'll get into like reasons why later. But um, and you came in and you were like, "Hey, I want to do this. This is blah 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 blah." And then you know you came you came in like three times to our e board meeting, mm. something like that. And on the third time, I started warming up to you, right around the third time. 
I was like, yeah. What happened on the third time, Ryan? Around the third time is when you started getting bullied, and I don't like bullies. By who? By, by the campus. <laughs> Was this like in the spring election. semester? Yeah. Okay, because I I came I came at the end of the fall. Mm-hmm. Um, Once when and I, then yeah, and to introduce your project. Yes, and then two times in the spring to really implement and talk like. Yes, because when I best. started coming, it was I didn't think I was going to run because I th- I thought that Dalton might run again. Yeah, um, and I was genuinely interested in the project. Um, yes, and then when um, the club stood up for me and stood up for what was right and stuff because. We both know like sexual assault and sexual harassment isn't something mm-hmm. you, you play around with. Those words carry power and it carries meaning. Um, and like to just throw it around like that, especially if people went through such things, um, that's not something you do. So when, when y'all like stood up for that and for me, like it made me like really feel at home. Yeah. Know? And so I just want to make that known that I wrote that statement. I was, like, sitting next to Genesis, and I was like, hey, we need to do something, because I don't like bullies. So you were getting bullied, and, you know, I felt like I had to be Captain save so I was like, all right, it's time for me to step in. I love that saying. <laughs> I was like, it's time for me to step in. So I stepped in, and I did what's right. And then and then I think from there, I started warming up, too, and then I got my position as SAPB director, and then, you know, here mm-hmm. we are mm-hmm. in this room being interviewed. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so that was fun. That yeah. was a little fun. Um, I know that I, when I'm in my office hours, I look forward to when you'd glance through the window and see if I'm in and yeah. then get a, a daily update. Like, you don't even need to sign up for a one-on-one with Literally. me. Literally. Because every day is a one-on-one. Yes, because I just, it's so much fun. Because I feel like there's no, like, I haven't found anybody beside you that, like, gets it. Like, gets being in all of these positions and having so much pressure and having everyone talk shit about you for nothing. Like... It's just, you know. Yeah, but but what do you say? You can't please everyone. I can't please so everyone. So you stay genuine to who you are, and you continue doing what you're doing because you have a passion for it. And that's one thing no one can take away. Your passion your for, yeah, your education <laughs> and your passion because your passion fuels you and it drives you. It gives you the driven determination to pursue your destiny. Mm-hmm. Um, and what you're doing right now is you pursuing your destiny because it's either gonna help you get to that. So, no, two things. No one, you can't please everyone, and stay true to what your passion is. Mm. So, yeah. Words, keys, keys of the day. So, I want to go into your politics. Are you going into politics after you graduate? With your Most degrees? likely, yes. In the United States? I don't know. If he wins a second term, no. Mm. If Trump wins a second term, no. Um... So here's the thing. I want to go to grad school in the United States, definitely. But the thing about people coming from Africa or people studying abroad from Africa, they usually never go back They because there's so much opportunities outside of Africa, and they stay in that. But it's important to go back for me and build up my country. And yes, I'm going to face a lot of obstacles going back home. Um, I don't have the indigenous surname. Um, I am lighter skinned, even though I'm colored. Um, my sexual orientation isn't, um, it's not welcome as fully in Namibia, um, but that is my obligation for many other kids like they like me, and for all the little girls who still um, are held back in life, um, and everyone like the disabled, and um, a lot of people that I think we can still give liberties to. And if I can do as much as I can, did year there, then um, and even if I don't become president one day or minister, um, as long as of I can Africa? do of Namibia, oh, of, <laughs> yes, of Namibia, <laughs> then I have achieved what I wanted to. <laughs> Africa's not a country, okay? Africa. Africa's fifty four countries. Okay, of N- N- how do you say it? N- Namibia. Namibia. That's the English Namibia. way. The ethnic way is Namibia. You just said it with an accent. Namibia. Yes. Namibia. Yes. Namibia. Yes. Because I always get, I feel like... <laughs> Namibia. <laughs> um, yeah, because I, I honestly, when I see it written on paper, I'm like, what is this? <laughs> How do you pronounce this? It's like N-M, right? Or is it... N-A-M-I-B-I-A. Yeah. Yeah. Namibia. 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 Okay. 
So you want to, if, even if you're not prime minister, president... Or whatever, like, I have to go back. Bring the opportunities that were given to me here and go back. Mm. Um, but grad school year, if I get to work for a senator or congressman, I'll take, or congresswoman, I'll take it. If I get to work in the UN for Namibia or a non-profit, Planned Parenthood, I'll do it. Um, but at the end of the day, I have to go back. Whether Trump wins or loses or makes it difficult for me to stay here, I have to go back. So... What were the factors playing into you coming to America? Like, did you, is that something that you always knew you wanted to do, or? Mm. No. I was going to go study in Pretoria, in mm. the capital, South Africa, at my dream university, at basically the Ivy League of um, Africa, uh, the University of Pretoria. Um, I was going to study biochemistry, and that was basically it. Uh, but then I got the acceptance of, the SUNY Oswego, and I had to choose either go to South Africa um, and wait to year the university accepted me, or deny South Africa and wait to see the university accepted me because the years, academic years, start different. So I took a gamble and I waited because my motto is you never know unless you try, and I don't want to be that person of like, what if? Mm. So I denied South Africa and I waited. School starts in January back home, and I got my, my acceptance end of February of uh, the spring of 2016. Then I took the chance, packed my bags, and came in the fall of 2016 and never went back home. Aww. So I know you're 25. <laughs> I'm 22. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm charming and you are disrespectful, okay? No, I just know, because I know that you came, you're now a junior, so when you came here, yeah. you were 20. I was 20. Yeah, and yeah. so you were already above, and you were in like all these yeah. freshman classes. I was. I understand that, because I was a late bloomer as well. Yeah. A late bloomer. Yeah. Well, uh, we finished school when we were 18 in December, mm -hmm. and I finished school when I was 19, so I was already a year back, so now I'm two years back. But I think everything happens for a reason. More so. knowledge, more power. Exactly. And I can enjoy my weekends. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, like you said, you said something along the lines of you don't want to ever have the what ifs in the back of your head, right? Mm -hmm. So, where does that, li like, if right now, if the UN called you, you know what I mean? <laughs> Are you dropping everything here? And, like, are you planning on going? Like, is that an opportunity that you can't not take? It's like dropping college? I mean, you can't, no, not college, but I'm saying, like, you're, like all your positions here, like, is that something that is really holding you back? Like, oh, I, I have to finish this out and I have to see this out, but, like, your dream is right there. You know what I mean? Um, so my obligation right now is to the campus and the students um, being president. So, I mean, a few days ago, I got approached to work on a campaign for a state assembly seat. Um, and that is my dream job. That's everything I wanted. But there's so much more that I can do on this campus. And that's where my heart's at. And that's what I promise the students. Um, so I'm going to ride it out. I'm going to do all that I can, give it, give it all that I can for the students on this campus and finish my degree because that is something not a lot of students back home in Namibia as well have the opportunity to do in Namibia and abroad. So it's my obligation to them and um, to the many people who couldn't. Um, and it's so hard affording college here, so, so hard. So I have to do my best to um, fulfill my education and get my degree. Mm. So, yeah. Okay. So you headed, you put together um, a campaign last semester. It started last semester. Um, equal pay for equal play. So tell me a little bit about that. So the campaign was started by, or the, the campaign was started and the issue was um, found out by Emily Statsko, the PA director of, uh, PR director of the Student Association. Um, and then she approached me because I was director of diversity, equity, inclusion, and we're good friends. And then we started the movement together. So equal pay for equal play was um, founded to give all the women's club sports that have a male counterpart an equal opportunity to thrive. Um, we don't want dollar for dollar. That is not what we wanted. We wanted an equal treatment, an equal opportunity to pay uniforms, to pay for equipment, the basic things you need to pay for sports, to go to different um, um, sporting events outside of the campus and maybe make regionals, states, and nationals. 
So just an equal opportunity, which the women's club sports were not getting. They were getting 65% less funding overall compared to the men. Um, so that's what the movement, why the movement was started. And if you look at where we are at now, the women's rugby are playing um, a game this weekend. And if they win, they go to states. Um, the women's club um, ice hockey got accreditation with the National American like Hockey Association. And the women's club softball are having more funding to play and travel to Syracuse, where they could only almost play home games. So, yes, there's a lot of setbacks for the boys' teams, but if the setbacks for the boys' teams are still where they can still play the same amount that the girls can play, and giving the girls some more opportunities and more support to get to the level where the boys are at now, then for me, that's an equal opportunity, and that's what we wanted. And um, they started the, or some boys from the men's team started the Earn What You Deserve campaign, and that really counters, like, who we are as Lakers, and why um, the, or the importance of giving everyone um, the same like opportunity to thrive on this campus. Mm. So, yeah, that's what the movement is. And there's still a lot more work to do. And we got to keep the movement alive. Um, but I want students to take from it into their homes, into their communities and into their workplace. That you got to stand up for what's right. Because fighting for what's right is... What's right. No, <laughs> fighting for what's right is always worth it. Mm. Yeah. So I think that really you need to try harder with getting us to remember that you have way too many slogans. Wow. <laughs> you have the students, it's too the easy. students, <laughs> the students united will never be defeated. You have that one. I know that one. That's um, so long. You just can't remember it's worth it. Like yeah. what? How you playing the longest slogan? <laughs> because that's what you ran on, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. 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 So you that's didn't run on what's fighting for what's right is worth it. You know, because that's Hillary Clinton's slogan. But that's what drives me. <laughs> <laughs> that's what drives me. <laughs> I'm not a political person. Like I don't. <laughs> like it's too I, complex for me. It's not even that it's too complex. It's like honestly, I all right. So I have a, this social media class where we talk about. Do you think that if celebrities, if more celebrities were involved in politics, millennials would care more? Yeah. Yeah. One hundred thousand percent. Look what happened to Taylor Swift. Exactly. Oh my God! And a bunch of like the voter registration went up. But Sixty-five. Like, look what. What's she what doing? Happened. I'm sorry. She just said to go out and vote, literally, and that's it. And it went up like sixty. Sixty-five thousand people registered the day after she said vote for um vote for Democrats. So, wow. that that just shows you. And like my thing is. Look at Kim Kardashian. She had a meeting with Donald Trump and got someone out of prison. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I just... So, yeah. So, if celebrities say it, then I'll be paying attention. Like, March for Your Lives. Not mm -hmm. that, I, of course, I 100,000% stand for Black Lives Matter, all those movements. But I, for sure, watch that live. Because, like, how... Like, you, are you... It takes a certain kind of someone to sit through a whole ass live broadcast of a a, mar a protest. You know mm. what I mean? Like, you want to see the, the, the good parts, like the speeches. But, like, why that is stuff. that? Why is it that some people are very, like, our age, are very politically um, inclined. inclined, and then some people are not? Like, like, I can't imagine not caring about, like, what your government is doing. But then again, that's my interest, and I can understand where other people don't come from. But, like, do you have this perspective? Like, oh, like, why? Why aren't people... Well, I have four other siblings, and maybe... I want to say maybe two of us are really into politics. I wasn't... All right, I'm not really into politics only because I had... I got a bad taste of it from my dad. Like, I didn't... Like, he's always right with everything. Like, I don't mm. really care to argue the seven and the third. Like, I know what's right. I know what's wrong. But also, I was also grown up on a kind of mentality of, like, yeah, it's our our right as citizens to vote but at the same time I know that my single vote doesn't really matter like in the grand scheme of like electoral colleges and mm -hmm. like all that other stuff so and then when you get down to it like congress people or what are those people that are like the representatives of your like neighborhood um congressmen congresswomen the districts or the state assembly Dis like the districts the, like the one that Dana Balt is running in? Yeah, that's a con She's Congress, All right, yeah. So, like, those people... The House of Representatives. Yeah, yeah, those people, I just... I. Like, how much difference can they really make? Because 
Well, I was introduced, the congressman, I, I think, I guess, um, came to my elementary school a couple times, but it just has to be presented in a more, like, appealing way. Mm. Like, like I don't know how you can sit through classes about this stuff. I was never a history person, mm. um, but I don't, I couldn't, like, I, I mm. couldn't possibly th- think like, about. Like, I don't even, I, as much as I know about the American politics, I don't know a lot about my own back home. And it, like, it started when, I was supposed to study for my SATs back home in our public library. You and must have SATs? Because I was coming to America. Oh, okay. So I was studying for the SATs, and I just got bored. So I, I went to the American corner, and there's this huge cutout of Barack Obama um, back, back home in, in Namibia. And I picked up something called the Federalist Papers, and I started reading it, and it just intrigued me how people like sailed across the ocean, and they were called founding fathers. And I picked up the Constitution, I started reading it, and like how people like made rights. Yeah. So for the three weeks that I was supposed to study for the SAT, two and a half weeks was reading the Constitution, American history, the Native like Native American history, and the Federalist Papers. And then four days was studying for the SAT. And you passed the SAT with the what? With I the passed. I, 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 it's not, I'm not going to tell you. 12. I'm not going to tell you. Was it less than 12? I'm not going to tell you. Was it, I'll tell you my Two things I'm not going to tell people is my, is my grades, my GPA. Why? And my SAT. Because I just feel like people like to judge. Mm. If it's just because I'm a biochemistry major, it doesn't mean I'm smart. Back home, you I obviously go, have higher than a 2.5. Um, I'm not going to say or deny it. I mean, you have to. That's like public knowledge. <laughs> you, you need, in order to hold certain positions on campus that you hold, you need to have a yeah, 2.5. So. And to have a scholarship, you need to have a 3.0. I mean, like when that. I didn't like you, I watched your, you came here. No, I, I literally like researched. What? Yeah. <laughs> so I saw your I video of when you talk. presented at like the geniuses, whatever. Yep. I saw that. I saw your little interview for that. I read your article that they posted about you. I then I went back and like your your family holds like some political like chair like they're like in the politics in your home country right I was junior mayor but my grandfather was the first person to build a hotel for colored people because they couldn't stay with black or white mm-hmm. people um so yeah colored people as in not what so colored you know Trevor Noah no oh Trevor Noah so, yeah me uh, yeah, and him yeah, are yeah, both yeah, yeah. colored uh-huh. so in apartheid you had blacks whites and then coloreds who were descendants from when the natives and the colonizers made babies with each other but during apartheid the coloreds were perceived as the bastard race Mm -hmm. because we had both white blood and black blood in us so when they wanted to um during apartheid they made sure that each person were segregated so you're black and white we are colored Yes, so I'm a descendant from black and white people. Okay. But we have our own culture, our own ethnicity. That's like when we do the census, it's colored. It's not mixed race. Do not ever call someone under the equator of Africa mixed race. Mm-hmm. They are colored. Well, they, like, Spelled they with a U. You? C-O-L-O-U-R-E-D. Yes, because we have our own culture. It's like it's like denying us the culture. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's yeah. interesting. So, like, during segregation, like, yeah, you just had to keep two people apart. You had to keep three people apart. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. So, anyways, yeah, I was doing some research on you, and I found out, I was like, oh, my God, this guy is smart, too. I'm over him. So... Intimidated. <laughs> Omar, just keep me <laughs> just your average child. <laughs> um, shut up. <laughs> and, yeah, so I know that, that you came here... Honestly, I thought that you came here because, like, of of the genius. I don't know what it's really called. The genius Olympiad? Yeah, it's just, like, a, a science fair in the summer. And they invite kids from all over the world. So I won gold in my country. So they sent me to show my research here. Show my research, and then that's how I got the offer for a scholarship. Mm. But I didn't get accepted, but it's like they gave me the scholarship. So, yeah, I didn't come for that, but I came because, mm-hmm. because of that. So you got 1000 on your essay. <laughs> right, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to say... I know stuff changed, so I, I don't know if it's good or bad what I got. As a, is it, all right, I, I'm, I don't care for what it is. It was is. out of 2,400, 2,600. 2,400, I think. Okay. Um, I don't really care what it is because I, I got like a... I want to say 12 on it, but I took my ACT, so that's how I got accepted here. I took that I got too. a really good score on my ACTs. But um, as long as... I always heard as long as it's above a 16, it's good. Like, 16 is an average. And oh, like okay. you're above that, then you're good. Let's just say if I got that, I would have been at Harvard right now. 16? Yeah. Harvard would Harvard deny takes like, you. Oh. 
Yeah, they'd be like, sight. They'd be like, <laughs> <"Sight." laughs> <"Sight." laughs> <laughs> right. You need something higher than that. But yeah, so that's cool. That that's I didn't know that that's how you got into yeah. politics. Do you hear all the creaking in here? It's raining outside. Yikes. I hope it floods us. So before we go, we're gonna start wrapping up this interview. Um, I wanna talk about pop culture. Um, are you a big Cardi B fan? No. You don't are you a big Nicki Minaj fan? No. Do you why don't you like either of those people? Because um What American artists are like super popular in in the, in the movie? Yeah. Everyone. Everyone. We only listen like it's not like oh do you listen to American music? It's do you listen to music because your music is our music. We have our own music too, like African house and stuff, but everything's big. Like Drake is big. I'm sure Cardi B is big because I left before she became big. Um, but yeah, like everyone loves. Everyone has it. Did taste. you know who Ariana Grande was before you got here? I don't live in a like a straw house. I know, okay? but I'm saying. <laughs> yes, I did <laughs> That's know. That's exactly her. what I meant. Yeah. Um. So yeah, who's your favorite singer? Um. Uh, I don't like singers. I like. <clears throat> like these American like EDM techno bands like Arizona Hippocampus but I have a huge poster of Adele because I think she's God so yeah but I don't listen to your music a lot yeah I know I'm weird I'm not I'm not your usual African <laughs> yeah people EDM people I wouldn't peg yeah. you for an EDM guy I'd I figure you, I'd peg you for like country like because you're all about the American dream you know ew um, yeah. no the only country song I like is that um Country girl, shake it for me, girl. Do you know that song? No, no. <laughs> I think it's by Luke Bryan. <laughs> That's the only song. Mm-hmm. I don't like country. Nothing against people who like country, but um, I no, no. I should play you my African song sometimes. You should. Yeah. You should just blast it in your office, and I'll just walk yeah. Right in. Maybe we should have an international day, and like, you know, it just yeah. Know, we, yeah for one of our board meetings, we should all bring a dish from our. Our, Favorite African country? No, from our <laughs> from our culture. What are you gonna bring? Um, empanadas, mm, platanos. Probably. What are What are is, you? I think Mexican. Empanadas is not Puerto Rican. Oh, sorry. Are you Puerto Rican? Mm-hmm. I'm very. It's an honor and a privilege to work with you. Thank You're you. You're doing Anna. great things already, mm-hmm. um, and there's great things ahead of you. Not just in SAPB, but. <laughs> But, um, like, after you graduate. I know that any company, um, any corporation, any Fortune 500, any entertainment industry, whatever you call this in business, will have you as an asset on their team. Talk more. Talk nice. So, so yeah. So, Mr. Director Rodriguez, Mm -hmm. the world awaits. The world awaits. So, if I quit next week. No. (laughs) <laughs> no, we're not even going there. You, you're not doing this to me. You know what I've been through. Yeah, you're right. Been through. Yeah, you're right. Been through.